How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning RPG Maker MZ. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the skills. And I think the best way to go about doing this is to just show you a few examples of custom skills. So I'm going to make a few skills the way that I would normally make them. I'll just talk about how I'm doing it and explain every tab. And I think that'll be a good learn by example method that might help some of you. So the first thing that I do when I think about my skills is I try to look at the class that would be using those skills. And quite often the names of the classes will, will inspire other names of skills. There's also several name generators that you can find on the internet to help you with your naming conventions and to pick really good names for your classes and for your skills. If you're just not good at creating names, there's generators out there. There's a ton of them. Looking at the first class, we have the warrior, but the warrior has no skills here. So let's change that. We're gonna go over to the skills tab and create a new warrior skill. I'm going to look at some icons while I'm trying to think of a name. Um, the warrior is going to use axes, so I think we'll use an icon for an axe for maybe the first enraged axe. How about that? There's a skill name. So up here in the type, the damage type. This damage type is going to determine what type of damage it does. If it, is it gonna do hit point damage, magic point damage? Is it a healing move? Is it a magic recover move? Is it like a blueberry that gives you MP back? Or is it like a siphon skill that drains HP or uh, like an Osmos skill that drains MP? So you decide that here, or if it's a unique thing that just applies a state and it doesn't have any damage, you can always select none. I'm gonna select HP damage right off the bat because it's gonna open up the next tab, the element tab. And this is going to let us decide what type of element this is. So I'm going to give this skill the physical element because it's going to be the first skill that the warrior has so it'll be the most basic skill so let's give it a custom formula we're going to change formulas throughout so don't be afraid to just put in a number and try it out and then change it let's start off with something simple I'm going to do 100 plus a dot ATK and the a is going to stand for the actor that's using this skill and then the dot signifies that this is a stat of this actor. So we're saying take 100 and then add whatever this actor's attack power is to it, except instead of adding just its attack power, we're going to say add its attack power times 4. But then I'm going to also add a subtraction. I'm going to take into consideration the target's defense. I'm going to use the letter B to signify the target that the skill is being used upon. So B dot DEF, and DEF is the extension for defense. So the formula reads 100 plus A dot ATK times 4 minus B dot DEF. I'll keep the variance at 20%. I'm going to allow this to critical. I think that's really good. When the player lands a critical, they're like, whoa, they do double or triple, which you can control how much a critical does. We'll talk about that later. You're going to deal a lot more damage and it's more exciting for the player too. So I like to allow my skills to critical for the most part. And now we know what this is going to do. We can give it a description. Let's go ahead and make it cost 25 TP. We get to select what skill type and by default, you'll just have two, special and magic, but you can go into your types and change those to say whatever you want. And it's the same for the elements. You can design and add whatever type of elements you want. What this little code is doing is saying, display whatever icon is in spot 15 before we show physical. How do you know what icon number to use? So you can go to items or skills anywhere you want, click on a open space. And if you double click on the icon, you can see all of your icons here. And in the bottom left corner, you get to see the number of that icon. For physical damage, I wanted to show this thing. We can say 307. Inside of the elements tab, we put in the icon right in front of the physical. So now all of our physical has an icon. Once we've given it a description and we've decided what its formula is, we pick the name and icon, what it's gonna cost we can select what type of skill type it is since this is going to be warrior specific move i'm putting it inside the rage tab select whatever tab you want i'm going to put it in the rage tab give it a cost the scope menu has changed a little bit from mv to mz now it shows quite a few more options which is really cool but we're going to still keep it to simply target one enemy and say okay and the occasion will be only on the battle screen and we'll say this is a physical hit if we want it to miss, but um, for these special attacks, I kind of really don't want them to miss. So I'm gonna make them certain hit because it's frustrating to the player when they save up their TP and they use their move and it still misses. The only time a move like that should miss is if that's part of the moves kind of specifics like heavy slam, it'll always deal extra damage, but it has a chance to miss. And that would be a specific time when you would use physical attack instead and rely upon accuracy. The animation tab has improved quite a bit. We're gonna select uh, an animation for 
are enraged axe skill quite often you're going to want to make your own and it's not hard to make your own so i'm going to actually do that very quickly i'm going to scroll to the bottom and i've got a few spots uh that i've already changed the maximum to on the animation so i'll go over to animations and go down there all of these that i'm showing right now come with the engine um, but I'm going to find one. The first one I find that's remotely relevant to like a, an enraged uh, axe attack. I kind of like this one, even though there's three, um, it looks more like a claw attack. Like it'll work for an axe too. Plus we can change it up. Yeah, this one kind of works better. And so let's use this one, which is the general special. You can change the scale of it. I'm going to scale it down to, I don't know, 75% and increase the speed by 25%. And we can change its rotation. We can change its offset. If we look at it, you see like boom, 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 boom. That's what it that's what it looks like. And we can select sound files that will play while the animation is, is going off. Let's find a few nice sound effects. Now that I've picked a few sound effects to customize this animation, I think it sounds and looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and apply this animation to the skill. And you can do that by selecting on the animation right here and clicking on the one that you just created. You can give it a message. All right, now it's time to explain the effects tab. This is where a lot of cool things can happen. Right click in here or left click in there and hit return. You've got four tabs. The first one is recover HP percentage and then you have a set amount of recover HP. Basically, if you do that, when the skill is used, it's going to fully restore your HP like it says. Same thing with your MP. You can also make it adjust your TP. In the next tab, you can have it add a state with whatever percent chance that you want. For example, if we do add state dead 100%, then every time this hits for 100% of the chance of the time, it's going to kill that thing. So this, this would be a very powerful buff on this weapon. You would call it like enraged axe of insta-kill because that's what it would do. It would insta-kill everything. We can make it so that it poisons your target. So you add poison state at 100% chance. Or we can make it so that only half the time that you hit them with this state, it'll add poison. This could be enraged act of poisoning, right? And you can kind of create your own custom items and skills just like that. And uh, this is a skill here, which if you can use a skill called Enrage Axe and Poisoning, or you can make an axe that always does that. But when this skill is used, it will apply any states that you tell it to do. It can also remove state. You're fighting a wizard, and he casts like a protect spell that increases his defense, and you have a skill called Dispel. You would use remove state, and you would take off all of the bonus states, like all of his regeneration or protect, you know, all of the states, all of the positive stats all of the positive states you can remove with like a dispel skill using the effects inside of here. So on the next tab, we have parameter changes. We have add buff, which shows you your eight stats. We talked about buffs before, but a buff will increase your stats by a set amount, which you can change how much each stack of the buff does. 10%, 25%, 50%. Set all of that up inside of plugins. This is how you would go about adding it to a skill. If you wanted your skill to buff your HP for five turns, this this would instead add the buff to the target that it's hitting because remember we're aiming at the target so if you wanted to buff your own HP you would have to go about doing this a little bit differently because these effects will apply to your target so one thing that's important to understand about the effects tab any effects that you put in here will apply to the target that you've selected in the scope it hits them it's going to put an HP buff on that enemy if you want to do a skill that adds a buff you would change the scope to the player so you would buff the player inversely you can do the same thing you can add a debuff to your enemy remove buff does the same thing it it'll just take off any buff so you can add a buff and then add a debuff and then they will counteract each other depending on how many stacks of each you have so say you add a, an attack buff and then you add another attack buff but then you get attack debuffed it won't immediately go down to negative it will instead um, just reduce your stack 
I'm, I mean, I believe that's the way it works. I'm sure plugins can change this behavior in the future. If you go to remove buff and you wanted to just completely take off that buff but not go the opposite direction, then you can just use this to remove any buffs. The same thing for removing any debuffs. And the last tab, you have some interesting things going on here. We have special effect of escape, which means the party will just leave. The party will just leave the battle. The battle will just be force aborted and uh, you will not get any experience or any loot for killing things, but instead the party will just escape. Um, this can be blocked if your party is in a battle that they cannot escape from. Now this is an interesting one, the grow effect on the other tab. This will permanently increase stats on characters that have already been initialized. If you want to make like a growth berry or something that you eat it and you permanently get more, 10 more HP and that's how it works. Uh, these are really good and a lot of RPGs use them and it lets the player customize which characters they like the best by um, which which character they feed all of their stat bonus items. Learn skill, you can have a skill teach you another skill through here. So you can use learn skill to learn a skill, but keep in mind when you uh, set the scope to one enemy, it's gonna try to teach the enemy that skill and I don't think it'll actually do anything. So you might wanna instead change the scope to all allies or sell to learn a skill that way. Moving on to the last thing, common event, you can do all kinds of things with common events. Just select common event. Keep in mind the target will be um, what's being targeted here, but a common event is running kind of outside of the battle. So you have to specify your targets differently when you do common events like this. It can be a pain in the butt if you want to issue damage in a common event. At least in MV, it was really hard. I imagine some plugins will make it really easy in the future to issue damage through common events. Through the action sequencing, we can really handle it all like that through common events, but this isn't the action sequencing tutorial yet. We'll get to that. That's all of the effects that you can put on skills. Mix and match and add your own combinations of skills. We created a skill that's got a custom animation. It has a simple effect and it does physical damage it does just slightly more damage in the basic attack you can make a more advanced attack by copying and pasting and it kind of just uh, saves you a little bit of time another thing to point out in the descriptions is you can also reference the icons here as well since you know you're going to be doing physical damage you can actually put the icon inside the description as well and it'll just draw another sprite to the screen to keep it more entertaining for your players and we wanted to make this stronger so we can instead 100 we'll do a 200 base and then we'll give this extra stat bonuses and add a little bit of extra variance or something like that and instead of this one costing 20 this one will cost 35 you can change this however you want one thing to point out that's really going to be monumental in helping you is you typically don't want to make another skill that overrides completely the skill below it you want to maintain that the player doesn't just always use the one best skill that they have so it's up to you to put like element rates on your enemies and make certain weapon skills of those element rates so the player is encouraged to switch up their attacks for maximum effect instead of just always going to the strongest one. But that's up to balancing and we can talk about balancing later on. In this tutorial, we specifically wanted to make a couple of skills, show you my process of going through making them and explain what these things do. Let's talk about some buttons. The occasion will determine when this is supposed to happen. Do we want it to always happen? Do we want this skill to be available at the battle screen only? Do we want this skill available at the menu screen only or do we never want it available. I set it to battle screen here. We only want the skill to be accessible during a fight when the user has 35 or more TP. Scope, we talked about that. Invocation, this is speed. You're going to play with this number a little bit if you want to add delays to your TP mode skills. Let's add a little bit of uh, speed to this super ragey axe to see what happens. You can make it certain hit with a percentage success rate so that even when it lands, it may not actually trigger the effect. You can make it that way. You can cause the skill to automatically repeat itself any number of times. For example, instead of increasing the damage formula here, I could just have it repeat twice and keep the damage formula the same. And then the TP gain is how much TP you get from each use of it. It's the opposite of the TP cost. Hit type, you've got certain hit, physical attack, magical attack. If you select certain hit, the attack will never miss, uh, at least if the success is 100%. You can make it so that it will always hit, but may not always apply an effect. It's based on the success percent chance. Uh, you can make the attack a physical attack but when you do this you open it up to if you're using armor scaling
profiling or other plugins to look at the defense of your target this attack should be reduced by the defense of the target if you want it to be a magic considered a magical attack some plugins will look at the magic defense of your target and apply reductions based on their magic defense if this is set to a magical attack and then of course the animation you can select what animation you want to use is from a drop down pretty easy finally we have the message area and the required weapon area you can make it say whatever you want required weapons you can make it so that in order to use enraged axe you have to be using an axe to use these skills so now there's a requirement of the person have the skill have the access to the skill type of rage and be using an axe so you can apply requirements to your skills as well another thing to note some plugins will let you have even more control and give you the option to add note tags in here to apply even more restrictions like class restrictions if you've got a multi-class system a lot more detail will come in the future but for these basic tutorials we're not going to touch too much on note tag or anything in the note box but we will get to this later on in the series now we can just award these skills to our warrior and we'll just give them to him at level one so we can experiment with them and look at them real quick <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our skills. We've got Enraged Axe and Super Ragey Axe. This one takes 20, this one takes 35. We're gonna do our basic attack, grind up some TP. When we get hit, we take some TP. When we land a hit, we get also gain some TP. When we defend, we gain some D TP. So it'll go up constantly. Here we have Enraged Axe. We use it, shushwing, and it goes in once at that speed and size. It looked like it fit pretty decently. So our turn again, let's get 35. I didn't give him quite enough HP. Ah, uh, maybe I did. It's gonna hit twice, so let's do Super Ragey Axe. Boom! Okay, it just played the animation once, but then it issued damage twice. So when we get into action sequencing, we can really make that look quite a bit different by moving the character across the screen, having animations and sound effects playing at specific timings, and splitting the action effect of the damage going boom boom and we see the damage. We can have that split up a little bit so it's like damage pop up, damage pop up, damage pop up, damage pop up, instead of all the whole animation playing and then four pop ups at once. We'll get into that eventually. Action sequencing is coming in the future. That's going to do it for this episode going over the skills tab inside RPG Maker MZ. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Dejica. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody at home, like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, come join us on Discord, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.